It sounds too simple, just taking vitamin C and effectively stressing and killing cancer cells, but there is some powerful science behind that claim, especially when paired with a particular short keyword there, nutrition protocol. So what does a massive study indicate about vitamin C, an extremely surprising mechanism by which it works, how it only works in the right circumstances, and of course, what is this nutrition protocol? I'm talking about breathtakingly fascinating data coming from this study where researchers used a nutrition protocol called a fasting mimicking diet alone or with vitamin C to see what happens to cancer cells. At first, they started out by simply using isolated human cancer cells here. Here, we're looking at a measure of cell death, a good thing in this context. So the higher the bars, the more cancer cells are dying. The CTR condition is the normal conditions of the cancer cells. The STS is a condition designed to mimic the fasting mimicking diet. A lot of mimicking going around. And the final two conditions are the same, but with vitamin C added. As we can see, both the vitamin C conditions led to a greater cancer cell death. But look at the far right condition. The nutrition protocol condition plus vitamin C led to a near 100% annihilation of the cancer cells. Fascinatingly, they were able to repeat these results in multiple other cancers from colorectal cancers to lung cancers to pancreatic cancers, all with the same effect. However, there is a huge mystery that came forward quite soon afterwards because when they did the exact same experiments on other cancers, there was no effect, no cancer death. And the kicker, these cancer cells were also colorectal cancer cells. So wait, Vitamin C and fasting mimicking diet kill cancer cells, but then when they're used against other cancer cells from the same cancer area, like the colon, there's no effect. Something is missing. That doesn't square, right? The answer lies in a specific mutation that the cancers, although they come from the same place, do not share. The cancer cells that do experience mass death have a KRAS mutation, while the insensitive ones do not. So to recap, the fasting mimicking diet plus vitamin C kills all these cancer cells, but only if they have a specific mutation. We'll discuss which cancers in a bit. Now, I'm not going to bore you with what KRAS mutation is because it doesn't help us to understand the rest of what we're about to uncover. Just know it's a problem in our genes and it makes cancer susceptible to vitamin C. But up to now, we've been looking at isolated cells. It's easy to destroy cancer cells when you remove them from their environment, your body. So do these results remain when looking at cancer in the body? The answer is yes. You can look at either graph. They show similar results. The takeaway here is the blue line, the blue condition, is lower than the other conditions. And since we're measuring tumor size, that's definitely a good thing. These data are in mice, and the researchers are using a closer-to-reality fasting-mimicking diet. But even so, I can tell you some of this has also been shown to be true in humans. All right. Remarkable results across multiple experiments. Cancer cells with a KRAS mutation are severely damaged without harm to healthy cells, mind you, by a fasting mimicking diet paired with vitamin C. But here's where I was pretty stunned by the results. Not to say that the information that we just went over wasn't already incredible. How does vitamin C have these cancer killing effects? At first, you might, like me, think that vitamin C might be working through its potent antioxidant abilities. For those unaware, that means that vitamin C can interact with potentially harmful oxidizing molecules, like reactive oxygen species, which interact with the structure of our cells and damage them. When vitamin C and other antioxidants interact with these oxidants, they neutralize them, making them less reactive and dangerous. Vitamin C is known to be a potent antioxidant. But check this out. No, vitamin C not only doesn't work through its antioxidant mechanism, but it massively increases the oxidative stress, more destructive oxidant molecules in the cancer cells. This is wild. So the takeaway here is that vitamin C does still massively hurt cancer cells, but not through typical means. It actually acts through a completely non-intuitive mechanism by increasing damaging oxidizing molecules within cancer cells. 
And as a final nail in the coffin, the researchers also discovered that vitamin C reduces the amount of a protective protein in the cancer cells. That protective protein is called ferritin heavy chain and it grabs onto iron molecules. That's important because iron can be very dangerous if it's free inside the cell because the free iron will interact with the structure of the cell and damage it because iron is highly oxidizing. In its bound state is not as reactive in the same way. So imagine what's happening in the cancer cells when there's less of this protective binding protein and much greater concentration of free iron. Mass havoc. In fact, people with KRAS mutation cancers live longer if they also have low expression of this protective iron binding protein. Again, translating this association to humans. Okay, so there's a lot here, but we can sum it up in two simple points before getting to the actionable steps. One, KRAS mutant cancers suffer dreadfully when exposed to a fasting mimicking diet and vitamin C. Two, vitamin C increases rather than decreases destructive oxidizing molecules within the cancer, likely by reducing the amount of a protective iron binding protein. Now, how should we think about all this? Well, this is all preclinical research, right? As in, we've been looking at cells and animals, and although you're made of cells and you are an animal, you beast you, it isn't good enough to translate this directly to humans. And more unfortunate, there are no clinical trials using vitamin C in fasting mimicking dieting. So, did I waste our time here? I actually have it for multiple reasons. One, there is a clinical trial in the works using these exact strategies. I will certainly be covering it regardless of the result when it releases, so stay tuned for that. Two, there are clinical trials looking at vitamin C without fasting mimicking diet. And although the overall study indicates no benefit, we actually suspect that to be the case because we're only focused on KRAS mutant cancers. And when looking at only KRAS mutant cancers, there is a benefit of vitamin C. And three, we have studies on fasting mimicking diet showing improved cancer outcomes. So yes, we need more studies, but the horizon looks quite promising. I will also point out directly that all these studies, except for the main one that we've been over, has paired vitamin C or fasting mimicking diet with the usual doctor's care. So I don't want you thinking that this is an either or scenario. In fact, in our main study, the researchers did further experiments pairing the fasting mimicking diet with vitamin C, but also added a usual anti-cancer drug. And they showed even greater effectiveness than when doing without. Okay, all that said, how do we apply this? Now I'm gonna walk you through how the researchers do it, and if you're interested in a more tailored, detailed breakdown, I have a personalized calculator and a written protocol available, along with much more on KRAS mutation and odd effect of N-acetylcysteine, so NAC, so a potent antioxidant, and more specifics on the mechanisms that we went over in this video. All of that is included for the Physionic Insiders, my premium research platform that comes with all these other perks too. If you're interested, check it out in the description box. I would love to have you join. Now. A fasting mimicking diet, which will now be abbreviated FMD, works like this. It's a nutrition protocol that lasts only five days, hence the easy in the title of the video. You would drop your calorie consumption to 600 calories on day one, then for the next four days, you would consume a mere 300 calories per day. Then the macronutrient breakdown is a low protein, moderate to high carbohydrate and fat nutrition sitting around 10% protein, 45% carbohydrates, and 45% dietary fat. You would do this once per month, every month. In addition, the original FMD uses a plant-based nutrition. Now I realize some will recoil and hiss like a cat doused in water, but that's what this study is used. So take it up with them. As, the, as for the vitamin C, the studies use very high doses, many grams of vitamin C. But be aware that consuming many grams of vitamin C can cause GI distress, kidney stones, and in some high iron absorbers, increase iron absorption, as well as mess with routine blood tests. So while more mild than some other vitamins in high doses, still be cautious. 
So overall, how do we sum this neatly? The main study that we went over indicates that vitamin C paired with a fasting mimicking diet stresses and kills cancer cells that are KRAS mutant cancers. So some examples of KRAS mutant cancers are colorectal adenocarcinomas, pancreatic ductal adenocarcinomas, uh, small intestinal adenocarcinomas, lung adenocarcinomas, ovarian cancers, and there's several others, but uh, <laughs> these are among the most common. I need to stress here that not all cancers are KRAS mutant cancers. So the best course of action is to, step one, ask about your cancer and discuss with your physician. Step two, if it is a KRAS mutant cancer, discuss with your physician if there are other reasons excluding you from trying a fasting mimicking diet. Step three, if you could do a fasting mimicking diet, prior, prioritize your vitamin C consumption as well. But keep in mind that we don't have hard clinical data on the combination yet, in spite of all that we just went over. And step four, probably the most important step of them all, Educate yourself further on your health by watching this next video. I'll catch you over there. I mean, I will literally chase after you and tickle you.